Let's see? Uh, I think we're live. Okay, yeah. there's, a little, there's a little preview thingy here. Are we live? <laughs> Your guess is as good as mine. Yeah, hold on. Let me, I, let me, I, I yeah, let me check the page to make sure. Okay, okay, yeah, we are live. Okay, so um, welcome to today's stream, guys. Uh, we are going to do, we're testing a bunch of new things out. I've never done a dual stream, and I've never used Ecamm Live. Uh, but today we have Sam Sue uh, with us in the chat and the live stream. But we're going to talk about kind of like the EV market because there's a new tax bill that just came out. There is um, and how that's going to really affect the used car market and also new car sales. And my guess is that EV prices are going to start to crash. And right now, EV car prices aren't worth it at all. So, uh, but Sam here thinks that they might be. So Sam, if you want to go ahead and talk a little bit about yourself, what you do on your channel, and um, then we'll kind of just get into it. We'll try keep it casual, show some data if we can. Yeah, Sam's yeah. got some data. I got a little bit, but uh, we'll keep it fun, hopefully. Yeah. So uh, on my channel, we kind of talk some stocks. We talk about EVs. Um, I hope to be talking about green energy stuff soon. Uh, it's not on there yet, but feel free to check that out. What's up, Corgi-san? What's up, Yao Fomo? All right, all right. Yao Fomo, you got has a Mach-E, so uh, this will be fun. But we're going to talk about kind of how like the used car prices are going down. But let's get into the first part on where my first... This all started because I was talking to Sam. Uh, the EV tax credit just got released, and it's basically $7,500 at time of sale. And the true winners of this are Ford, uh, GM, and, of course, Tesla. Um, oh, Tyson Industries, welcome back. Um, but yeah, there's Ford, GM, and Tesla that are the true winners. And basically, everybody else, Hyundai, Kia, Lexus, Toyota, I mean, what else, Sam? Who, who lost from uh, that? Polestar. Polestar. VW is losing out on some. Uh, basically, anything that's not made in the U.S. is losing their credit. And also anything that's too expensive. Oh, right, because of the price caps. Dollar cap. Right. What are the price caps again? Uh, Fifty-five on sedans and eighty thousand on the uh, trucks and SUVs. Okay, so pretty much like a lot of the, so the Model X for sure is uh, definitely out. That's kind of my hunch too, because the Model Y, if you if you know as as you know, is like a sixty-five k car, right? Yeah, yeah. And That's so, an interesting one, right? Because the Model Y, if it's a, actually gets classified as an suv then it gets the credit but then if it doesn't like they classify as a wagon or something then it just doesn't get anything right right uh, but yeah i think it already is classified as suv though right i think that's just what the manufacturer says i think oh. if you go on the epa website it says something else i see i see um but yeah it, if if i think it is classified as an suv but what's funny with that is um with Tesla, and I've been tracking Teslas for a bit now in terms of like their pricing and stuff, if it's classified as SUV, I just I have this weird feeling that Tesla's going to raise the price from like 65000 up to like 70, even like 75, just to like squeeze as much as possible of that uh, of the tax rebate. So, um, but that brings you us to the... Think, uh, you don't think that Tesla's CEO, Elon Musk, he said that their car prices are embarrassingly high, that that means anything? That's true. That's a really good point. So what do you, what do you think that they're, they're going to do? Uh, I think they'll bring the Model 3 prices down to meet that sedan, 55K, um, somehow. So to make everything meet that under that so that they can compete with the other sedans that might be coming out from the other manufacturers. Right. Um, that's what I think. I don't know what they're going to do with the Model Y. It, I think it really depends on what it's classified as. Right, right. Um, the thing with the Model 3, though, because the Model 3 long range, uh, it was like a 56.7, uh, or sorry, 57.990 before they took it off the website. And what's really interesting is the short range is a 46.990, which, of course, that qualifies. But I was just thinking about this yesterday, like Tesla being Tesla and Elon trying to, you know, 
get as much revenue i would say per vehicle i have this weird feeling that they're gonna push the short range they're gonna remove short range first of all right they're just gonna keep it model three they're gonna make it one type of battery I don't, you can probably talk to this about if that like is efficient or not and then they'll push that model three to like a 53 point price point and then they'll say like if you want that extra range pay us like 125 dollars a month or like a $7,500 one-time payment after the sale for that extra range, because that that would really squeeze. Um, Ooh, I, I really don't like the sound <laughs> of that. That sounds that's like sounds like the worst case scenario type thing. That sounds horrendous. Right, but if you think about it as like a business person, like trying to push as much revenue as possible, like that that might be. Uh, but interesting. What do you think of that? uh do you think that'll sell <laughs> that's I that's mean, the other thing right with the recession coming up and people not as confident with buying like can people actually keep tra buying 55k model threes but i mean that brings it to where i think evs at a 50k price point isn't worth it um but go ahead like yeah. you, you 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 i know you did some research but go ahead and talk about why you think it is worth it right i i did some research right so the M model three it really competes, I, I would not say it competes against a Toyota Camry. I don't think a person who's buying a Toyota Camry is cross-shopping a $50,000 car. Um, I really think it might compete against something that's a little bit higher priced, something that might be a little, might be a little faster to begin with. So um, I'm thinking more like a I don't know. I, I really don't know that many like gasoline powered cars because I've basically ignored them um, for a long time because I, I just don't think they're the future. But maybe something like something fast from Audi or BMW would be a more accurate competitor um, because I really do, just don't think a Camry shopper is cross shopping the Model 3. Um, right. So you think it's more like the 3 Series. Um the C-Class, stuff like that. But I guess the the cross-shopping is, I think, happening between, like, the Tesla Model 3 and, like, the hybrid. I think that's right. why people are... Because it's like, uh, do I pay, do I pay like, um, that type of price for a gas-efficient one, or do I just pay for, like, an electric car that's, like, slightly yeah. better quality? I'll tell you what I cross-shopped with. Right? Okay. So, so basically, um, I, I currently drive a Prius. Right, um, so being wanting to be eco-friendly, you cross shop the obvious Tesla, and then you kind of look around and be like, "Ooh, that Tesla is expensive. What else is there?" So then you look at the Nissan Leaf, then you look at the uh, Chevy Bolt, and then right now you can even look at the Chevy Bolt EU. So if you cross shop all of those, then all of a sudden, the not so exciting looking ones like the Nissan Leaf and the Bolt start to look a little more appealing um, just on the price point thing because you're, sh you're not cross shopping for like speed or the uh, self-driving stuff. You're more cross shopping because of the price and because you want something that's uh, efficient. I, I, that's what I think. I see, yeah, that makes sense. So, so going from a Tesla that's Let's just call the standard range at forty six, forty seven thousand dollars. What's the lowest one be under that? So the next one down would be um, the Toyota Prius Eco. Actually, no, the Nissan Leaf at thirty five thousand eight hundred. Uh, Two twelve range. It gets the seven thousand five hundred tax credit because it is built in the U.S. Even though it's a Japanese maker, so they're showing Toyota and Honda and. Hyundai and whoever that it can be done um, because they're building it here so they get the credit and then the next thing is you could look at the Chevy Bolt at 26,000 and then the uh, Toyota Prius Eco at 25,000 and then the Chevy Bolt EUV is at 27,000 gotcha gotcha and all so, of these get the credit minus the Prius because it's not an EV right right yeah, I guess that makes sense. So, so would you? So, from your perspective right now as a shopper, which one would you get? Well, which one do you think is the best value and bang for buck? Okay, so the Chevy Bolt starting at twenty six thousand. Um, I think it gets two hundred and forty miles to a charge. 
Um, and then with a $7,500 tax credit or uh, time of sale credit, they changed that. It's 19000 So if you're bent on, hell bent on buying a brand new car, that's the one. Okay. Yeah. That's not bad. All right. So I just realized that there's a bunch of comments coming through in the chat. Uh, yeah. Do you have the stream? And, but I keep, so this program is supposed to show these comments on the screen, but I don't think they're showing up on the actual live screen. Uh, but let's go through some of these comments because uh, there's uh, been a bunch right now. So Tyson Industries, welcome back. You were here last time. Hopefully you like my videos now. Uh, but yeah, I caught you. Um, Yao kind of down priced out price discrimination. My mom bought a Model 3. Congrats. Uh, Tyson Industries, Brian Kim. Is that the same Brian Kim that I know? Said Ford EV price was raised the exact amount of tax credit. That's, oh, Brian Kim, uh, Credit Brian. Is that Credit Brian? Um, were you following uh, the Ford EV, um, or sorry, Ford price, stock price? Because I know you do a lot of stock stuff on your channel, Sam. Are you following the Ford I, price? I was, I was not um, specifically following Ford, so I, I don't really know. I, I've heard that it's good, but I've just, that's in passing. I haven't actually researched it myself. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, Owen Lee, what's up? What's up? Uh, Yao Fomo, makes sense. If I was a Ford CEO, I would raise the price. Yep, definitely makes sense. Uh, Corgi Sion, hi, Owen. Uh, Tesla, Tyson Industries, Tesla is 10 years of any competition. That's, that's a strong word because there's a lot of competition coming out right now from uh, some of the other manufacturers. Um, a lot of the, in like the luxury space, from my viewpoint, from what I see, the Model Y has really taken the market. It, that's a fact, I would say. Uh, but Lexus, Toyota, Mercedes, Audi, BMW, they're all coming out with a, a Model Y killer at like a slightly lower price point. Um, like, for instance, the Mercedes has the EQB, which is like a 220 mile range SUV at like a 57, 58 price point, which is about $10,000 less than a Model Y. So I think like the Tesla is like the Netflix of the tech world for streaming and stuff like that, like first to market, first mover advantage. Uh, but all yeah. these other OEMs, once they get there, uh, there's going to be a lot of competition. What do you think about that, Sam? Uh, I think I think he's pointing out that Tesla has that self-driving advantage, um, which I think is true. I think they actually do have a self-driving tech advantage. Um, probably, yeah, uh, Yao Fomo just said uh, they are definitely ahead, but not, I'm not sure it's 10 years. Yeah, I'm not sure that it's 10 years either. Um, maybe it's five, somewhere in that range, five years, uh, because the other automakers they can they can really hire other companies like Nvidia and um, other other tech companies to help them process data. That's right, or I just think. or just steal Tesla engineers, right? Yeah, they could. Yeah, they definitely could try yeah. that. Yes. Have you, uh, Sam? Have you been in a? Uh, have you done like the autopilot on a Tesla? I have not. Oh. But I've, I've seen it in videos in action. I think I've seen you do it. Yep. Um, I, I've seen um, other people do it, and it's and it looks really good. I like it. I, I yeah. like what it's doing. Yeah. yeah, autopilot, definitely. I would say with autopilot, Tesla is 10 years, well, maybe not 10, maybe like five years ahead of the competition because it's a strong product. But full self-driving, I was able to sit in that with the beta through my friend, and that was, that was a gnarly experience. And we weren't even on the main roads. We were just in a neighborhood, and it was just definitely crazy all right so let's see yeah. only is a good idea to get a used model s at the moment i depends on the price if it's like a really old one uh like 2012 2013 at 40k because that's where they're at i would say it's it's worth it um but sam would you consider a, a used model s from old tech at a lower price point versus some of your uh like the bolts or the leaf anything like that the question is does it come close to that price to that range, um, I I would if it comes close. I would, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, I I know the earlier model years are not as good, so maybe not anything before what 2014, 2013. Um, but I think the anything after that, if it's coming close in price, it's a very nice car. It's a very nice car. Yeah, it's 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 it's, it's definitely a nice car. I think it's probably one of my most favorite ones. Is for the new one, but the older tech is definitely uh, tough. Uh, so at the end of the day, it just depends what deals you, what deal you get, Owen. So, uh, Yafomo, so buy more talk. Do really, people really look at the price of the car? Ooh, that's 
That's a question because Sam, I know you you like to you know look at the price of the cars, but I would say most yeah. buyers just look at the monthly payment. What are your thoughts on that? Well, the, the monthly payment natural would be higher if you have a, a more expensive car. Uh, so in a, in an essence, they are looking at the price of the car. They're just looking at it through a weird filter, which really blinds people as to what they're buying. Um, but I mean, I think a fifty-five thousand dollar car, the monthly payment versus a say twenty thousand dollar vehicle after the tax credit. I think you'll see that very clearly in that monthly payment. Yeah. Well, the thing with that is, I don't know if you're aware with um, when you buy certain EVs, like specifically lease them, uh, uh -huh. some OEMs don't roll that $7,500 credit into the lease, uh, but some do. So that's where the math can get really uh, jicky, I would say, because you would literally have to finance or buy the car with cash to get that tax credit. But now that on January 1st, uh, the three winners, GM, Ford, and Tesla, get that tax credit, the tax credit is going to be taken at point of sale. Uh, so I really think Actually, that's... that... that tax credit, I'm, I'm fairly certain that it's basically started as is um, as soon as they announce which models are actually qualified this year. They just haven't so, finalized that list. Oh, wow. So I do you think... Been. Because point of sale... Like, so are you talking about the point of sale part, or are you talking about oh, yeah. like the three manufacturers that will start this year? Yeah, I think so because uh, Hyundai and whatever, whoever else, they've already lost the credit. Right. That that's like, that part I understand, and then also, who gets the credit next year is really up in the air. Um, what do you mean by that? Really, is. because there's also a battery manufacturer component to this bill. Right. So it's not just that the car is manufactured in the U.S. It's that the battery components need to be manufactured in the U.S. or a country that the U.S. has a free trade agreement. So in essence saying, not China. Um, so then the uh, battery minerals, so like the lithium and whatever needs to go into the battery to make the energy storage component also needs to be made in the U.S. or mined in the U.S., or a country that the U.S. had a free trade agreement with. Right, right. Have so, you heard yeah, any? Good. Have you heard anything where um, some of the OEMs are going to start to try and uh, manufacture the cars here, or at least the battery here? So or, yeah, yeah. So I was looking that up. So I was wondering because I don't want to get really political here, but no, no party is dumb enough to be like oh let's just do this thing and nobody has any plans and maybe eventually five years down the road somebody will benefit because it's like it'll take five years for them to build a factory right yeah, right at least that's how long it takes gm and the other guys to build a factory but um if you look at a list of the companies that are making battery factories um i actually have it on my screen here okay um, yeah let me see if i can like share it LG. there you go yeah, you see that LG is building factories um, with GM and Stellantis. You have Panasonic working with Tesla. And I believe the other customers, the one that says other customers, it means the, uh, Toyota. Uh, Samsung is uh, getting ready to build for Stellantis, which is uh, Chrysler. And then SK on, they're building for Ford and you have CATL coming. So this is all batteries that will be made in the US so that their cars will qualify. Okay, yeah, sorry. I was trying to publish yeah. this. I'm trying to, we're, we're learning here, guys. Yeah. We're learning the, oh, okay. Oh, I have to publish. Okay, so now everybody can see the yeah. screen of, about the data. Okay, so yeah. if you want to go through it again, sorry. Oh, it's okay, yeah. So, so it's just like, you see LG, they're building a bunch of factories in these little locations and um, they expected time frame of completion and who they're working with, who their batteries are going to. So you see like LG looks like majority of their batteries are going to GM. And you have Panasonic working Tesla. And then you have all of these companies that used to only do business of other places. They're going to come make their batteries here because otherwise it, even GM or Ford, even these guys, their cars won't qualify because wow. of the battery manufacturer component requirement right 
And so I saw at the top you said time frame. Is that like completed by or like completed by? Wow. Okay. So there are so LG's already working on it. What about the ones all the way at the bottom? They're they're just no uh, ETA. These are, these are all planning. These probably were announced earlier this year in like January, because these companies always hear from our people in Congress about what what they're about to do. Right. So somehow the information's leaking out to these guys. Yeah. Um, and they're like, okay, we got to get moving. Right. So then which, so what, from your viewpoint, which brands have the head start? Panasonic and LG. Uh, but then, okay, so LG is GM pretty much and Stellantis. And then Panasonic is only Tesla. Or what's, what is other customers or? Uh, uh, other te- customers is usually Toyota. Okay. Because Panasonic works a lot with Toyota on the hybrid batteries. Right. So really we could just see kind of like a couple of years where GM, Tesla, and Ford have that tax credit and then everybody else gets it in year three. From does that sound about right? We could be looking at next year just Tesla having the tax credit. If their car is the right price. Wow. Because right now Ford and the other guys source a lot of battery components uh, from not the U.S. Wow. So it kind of remains to be seen. This is kind of a lawyer thing. They're going to have to sort through the parts and determine if it meets the threshold because um, it, it's, it's a very confusing percentage thing. So next year, 40% of battery minerals must be extracted or processed in the U.S. or a country where the U.S. has a free trade agreement. And then it's the same, like it's 50% for the battery components. And you can just repeat what I just said. So this is like... A lawyer's thing. Gotcha, gotcha. So, do you? Th- so, pretty much, the IRS has to kind of make a decision on this later, or uh, the EPA, or no, whatever. I think, the, I think this is self-reported by the companies. Like, they have to determine <laughs> what percentage, um, and if it meets, and then they have to go source the parts. So, in essence, I think this bill is a is a good thing for the U.S. in the long run. I don't know that it's going to do anything good for us in the short run, just because the percentage of materials that must be sourced here just jumped up so high that I I really just don't see how a lot of the companies can meet that all that quickly. Um, but in the long run, if we don't want to lose all of the technology to China, we got to bring it here and have some of it made here, at least some of it, um, or else China will just be manufacturing all the cars, period. That's it. Right. Makes sense. All right, I'm trying to switch back. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Uh, if you want to go ahead and read through the chat while I figure this out. Yeah, I see. Uh, is Nikola buying with RMO being the battery maker union as well? Uh, Nikola, I would say uh, let's see if they can manufacture at scale. Uh, let's see. Buy more Tesla stock, sell Ford. Uh, that's hard to disagree with, right? Because I've never gone wrong buying Tesla stock. I've only gone wrong selling it. <laughs> um, so every single time I, I say Tesla stock is overvalued, I get screwed. So don't say that. And it's, I mean, Nikola, Nikola's interesting, right? Because it's a heavy, heavy truck maker. Um, and if we are to stop climate change, we're going to need those heavy trucks to be electric or something else. Um, something that's not going to spew out tons of carbon dioxide. So I, I do like the fact that there is another heavy truck maker that wants to go electric other than the Tesla Semi, which is so long delayed. Um, yeah, and they I think they, re- they released pricing on it, but then they took it away. But it's like starts at like $150,000. But that's like a whole nother area. Like how much is like a Tesla semi at 150 K versus like a regular truck head. And like, does it even make sense uh, in terms of like I believe the- that Walmart has come out and said that it makes so much sense that they're just waiting to see that, um, see the trucks run. Right. That, so that makes sense. Yeah. If the king of cheap wants those trucks to be electric, you better believe that they work. Um, yeah. All right, so I figured it out. Okay, so now you're always sharing on the screen. 
and now we're both in like the bottom left corner. Is there anything else uh, you want to go over about batteries or um, some other research that you've uh, done? On this? Yeah. Um, so to back it up, it. Yeah. Oh, sorry. So to back it up, Tesla is the real winner next year from your viewpoint. You don't really know if GM or Ford is, um, but hopefully they'll, I mean, Biden likes Ford, right? So maybe they'll just squeeze I know. I it. think Biden likes GM. Oh, okay. Because, like, the union thing. Well, by extension, Ford, but he talks a lot about GM. Um, gotcha. The union people basically put him in as president. You know, without the union people, he, he doesn't win Michigan or whatever state it was. Um, so he had to do something for GM for the union workers. Um, but, I mean, we'll see what happens. I, I really think that they're thinking in the right direction that all of this battery technology and all of the manufacturing technology is winding up in China and no matter what side of the this argument you're on you don't really want that to happen because then you end up dependent on them just like how you know Germany's dependent on Russia for gas and that whole mess anyways um, so we don't we don't want that um, right. so they're they're mind is in the right direction it remains to be seen how effective it's going to be um, because seventy five hundred dollars you know uh, will it force everyone to build it? it it's looking like yeah because everyone's building battery factories here right i know you've been researching part of the bill and uh, you probably have some videos coming out on it on your channel but uh what type of incentives is the government doing for like these manufacturers were like lg and panasonic to incentivize and build more of these factories I think a lot of that is happening on the state level. Um, oh. That's, um, a lot of the factories are being built in places where the state will, will give, fork over the money. Okay. Makes sense. Um, yeah. What so, other parts of the bill are like supporting the EV um, market, if there's any? Yeah. I think that's it for, su for supporting the EVs. Um, I don't know that it, like quote supports the evs like because you've seen those articles with those headlines saying oh ever, like gonna get seventy five hundred dollar tax credit right but it, they didn't those articles they didn't really read into this bill and what it really entails and what it's really after because i really no. think that a electric vehicle has reached uh, operating cost parity with uh, gas cars if not it beats it because like i was looking at it just rough calculations Yep. Like if we're talking about Toyota Camry Hybrid, which gets okay. fifty-two miles per gallon, your yearly operating costs to go twelve thousand miles is like almost a thousand dollars. And then if you compare that just with a Nissan Leaf and electricity at fourteen cents per kilowatt, you get a, a half, a little under half, four hundred eighty dollars. And then if you have solar panels on your house, you might as well be free. So right. Well, the thing with that is the Nissan Leaf, does it get the $7,500 tax credit right now? It does. It does. Because it's made uh, where the battery is made. Uh, it's Well, right now it does. Right now, this year it does. Next year, it's kind of in, up in the air because we don't know what percentage of the battery is made from components from the U.S. I see. Um, that's like, like I said before, that's a lawyer's thing. They're going to have to figure that out. But right now, because the car is final assembly in Tennessee, it gets a seven thousand five hundred dollar tax credit. Gotcha. But the thing, though, it, to, to, to debate back, I would say the Nissan Leaf is actually more like a Corolla hybrid in terms of spot size, style, and all that. And I think the Corolla hybrid is under twenty k, twenty thousand. I think it's like a okay. seventeen or eighteen. Um, so if you want to pull it up really quick. Um, and do some of the math we can see because that that's really what it would be compared to in terms of like the nissan leaf in terms of size and stuff they i i, I like to think the camry hybrid and maybe i'm biased because i kind of enjoy toyota's um yeah. but the camry hybrid is more so like the model 3 variant standard and the bmw 3 series is actually higher than a model 3 because of uh, actual luxury and comfort uh, maybe not technology I mean that's the one thing I always kind of spiel out with Tesla it's like Tesla is a technology company and not a luxury car company 
Um, and if once you have that expectation, then you you start to be more, I guess, forgiving with how Tesla's uh, interiors right, are. So, so how about I just straight compare the Chevy Bolt or the Chevy Bolt EUV against the Camry Hybrid? I know they're not exactly the same shape of vehicle. Well, in terms of like size and everything, like I think the the Corolla Hybrid is more uh, competitor to the Nissan Leaf and the Bolt, because yeah, the Bolt yeah. is also pretty small too. Actually, uh, maybe the newer yeah. one is bigger, I, but actually, I, I like to compare the Leaf with the Camry, because um, rarely does someone sit in the back seat. That's that's a, I like to say that, and then I also really don't like how the Camry trunk. Is. It's that like tiny little like, you know, like it's not a hatchback. So like, gotcha. It's, tiny. Um, it's hardly usable. You're not taking that that to IKEA. Whereas you could take the Nissan Leaf, put the seats down, and take it to IKEA, and you can actually bring some stuff back. So I see, I see. That's just a usability standpoint. Yes, it's it's the Camry is bigger um, overall. The front seat is position differently than the Nissan Leaf. The materials are a little better than the Nissan Leaf, or at least uh, at least a few years ago. I actually drove a Nissan Leaf a few years ago. Yeah, because there's actually I'm pretty sure that, I know there's a Corolla hatchback, but I don't know if there's a Corolla hatchback hybrid. <laughs> uh, okay, so I guess this would be like, so there's a Corolla hatchback, and it gets 28... Wait, well, this is weird. There's like one of them gets like 32 to 41 miles per gallon. So your Corolla oh. hatchback, what's what's the price on that? So Corolla hatchback, it goes anywhere from 21 to 24. So let's just call it 23. You mean the base. Base, base? You mean the base? Yeah. Okay, 21165. Okay. And what's the um, miles per gallon on that one? It goes uh, 32 and 41, so that's probably like a 37 combined. Let's just call it that. Okay, 37. And while you're doing that, I'll read through some of the comments. Uh, Yafomo, sad face. Yes, it's very sad. EV prices, they're going up, but then some are going down. Uh, Tyson Industries, what happens in 2024 when Trump bulldozes all EV charging stations except Tesla? Is that, is that happening? Yeah, that's not happening. <laughs> Uh, happy hippo welcome back the prices are not including these dealerships adding their market value some are doing 10k over that was actually a point that i was holding in my back pocket for you sam but uh i'm not gonna take it out but happy hippo is a good point like msrp is one thing and a lot of these dealers it says msrp but they can control the price they want whereas tesla controls their price so we're comparing MSRP to MSRP, but yeah, in the real world out there, it's a much different story. But Happy Hippo, um, inventory is coming back. My personal guess, because uh, I track, I like to track a lot of the inventories in the markets. We have another six months before there's cars everywhere because of rising interest rates. Uh, okay, Sam. Yeah. What you got? I think I think the uh, supply chain shortages will alleviate itself. I just don't. I don't think that's a long-term uh, consideration. It might be right now uh, for people who are desperately looking for a car right now. Which I would just say, wait, uh, wait for this whole crazy thing to go over. Right. Yeah. I mean, if you can wait, definitely for sure. Um, but some people, I guess, can't wait. They need a car and they they need something yeah. to go to work and everything. Uh -oh. Yeah. All right, so what you got? Corolla hatchback twenty one one six five. Yeah, so the yearly operating cost is thirteen fifty two. Okay. Corolla hatchback. I didn't think that was that would make such a drastic difference on the gas. It's like forty percent more, or thirty percent more than the the Camry hybrid. Which in that case, I would take the Camry hybrid. Um, right. I, I yeah, there's a Corolla hybrid, but. Um, there is not a Corolla hybrid hatch. Okay. Yeah, because the Corolla hybrid does 52 miles per gallon. I think the, the Corolla hatchback would be a very appealing to people who are in that price range. Yeah. Yeah, because if I'm reading this correctly, so toy, uh, Nissan Leaf out the door, or sorry, no sales tax, 28300 Corolla 
hatchback 21165. So oh, that's well, like you'd have to get you you don't have to pay sales tax on that. Right, I guess we're 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 not factoring sales tax right now, right? So we're just you're doing yeah, like you don't Nissan. Pay tax, sales tax on the Nissan Leaf. Not in Maryland at least. I think I'm, I'm in Maryland, so Did that did that because I, I thought they ran out of funding for that. There was like a thirty five hundred dollar credit, right? Uh, it's three thousand, you just don't pay the excise tax when you buy any electric in Maryland. Oh. That's news to me because I remember at one point Oh wow. Is I did not know that. Yao Fobo, did you pay sales tax on your two monkeys? Because <laughs> that's that's news to me actually. Because I remember it used to be a rebate, and they would always run out of funding. You'd buy it, you would wait six months for your check. But now, if they just took sales tax away, that's that's a slick deal. Somebody who bought something recently would have to speak to that because I recall that being taken off hmm. in 2013 at time of sale. Gotcha. I think I think it ran out of funding, but all right. So let's just. I guess we'll try and. Okay. Well, sales tax is like six percent, and that's probably a good average across the country. Um, so let's do twenty-two, right? Twenty-two. And uh, I don't know how many people are buying Corolla hatchbacks, so you probably could get them to give you. Give you some off. <laughs> no, actually. You'd be surprised. Toyotas are at MSRP right now, and even some of like the hybrids, there people are paying two to three k markup above MSRP. They're paying two to three k up above for like a Prius. Yep, that's cool. Prius for sure, because that's well, maybe out here in California, it's uh, hot tamales out here. Okay. Okay. What's your gas price at over there? Uh, it's coming down actually. Uh, okay. I just filled up. I have a RAV4 hybrid I'm driving right now, um, which is funny because someone asked how my NX450H is doing. Uh, but uh, it's like four ninety nine. Okay. So out here, that's why there's so many EVs because it, it just pencils and makes more sense mathematically a yeah. lot more. So if you change my 380 over, I'm, I'm factoring gas at 380. Right. Well, we should use the national average. Nation, what is national. The I don't even know. I haven't been to a gas station in a while. I drive a Prius plug-in, and I don't go very far. So yeah, let's see. Google national average of gas. Uh, Yalfomo, uh, UNMD. Yes, it's a lot of money. Yalfomo, do you remember if you paid taxes on your Maki when you bought it? Your uh, sales taxes. Uh, so now for national average right now is three ninety one or three ninety two actually. Oh, well, close enough. Yeah. Okay, so. So yeah, so Nissan Leaf. Let's just say there's no tax. Twenty eight three hundred Corolla hatchback with six percent tax. What is that like? Twenty four hundred out the door. Yeah. So you essentially let's say you're paying eight hundred dollars extra a year to operate your Corolla hatchback. So it'll take you what a few years to catch up. So you basically yeah, break even at like the three to four year mark if you took a Corolla hatchback versus a Leaf. Yeah. Yeah. But that's another thing. Like people don't keep their cars. Like they, it's, I think in the average is most people do 60 month loans, which is actually going up now. It's like there's like even 84 month terms. But people keep their cars on average about five years. All right. So, so yeah, for, uh, to that point, what do you think about the $4,000 used car used ev thing as long as the car is under what 25 so i think there's so there's a there's a couple of evs that come to mind when it's under twenty five thousand. there's a nissan leaf right used ones i think uh -huh. right yeah, and the definitely. bmw i3 which i've actually had before i love that car a lot um but it's gonna push those prices up because it's at one point you could buy a used bmw i3 for like twelve thousand dollars and now, because of that tax credit, it's going to push those used car prices up. So you're probably only going to see them for like fifteen, sixteen, maybe twenty, twenty thousand dollars just to hit that cap for the four K credit. Because uh, dealers are just going to be dealers; they want that profit. Um, but I think there's also an income cap on that too, right? For the there used is. EV, do you have to make less than seventy five thousand as a single? And then you have to make less than one hundred and fifty uh, filing jointly. 
which the problem is like the BMW i3 range I think is like 150 miles uh, and but the Nissan Leaf that I see on your notes there 212 that's actually not too bad um, there was another study I don't know if you've heard this is that when people buy their first EV they really care about range uh, like they want 300 400 range miles but when they buy their second one they don't care as much about range uh, if you were to buy an EV right now, would you care about how much range it has? Like, or is like 212 enough for you? I think it's got to be at least 200. Um, but anything above 200, I think, is good enough. Right, right. Yeah. All right, so let's see if Yafama, uh, I think he said yes, he paid tax. He paid tax on it? Okay, so maybe yeah. it changed so if you had six percent of both, yeah, it would take three. From this math here, it would take like three to four years just to break even. So if you're someone that keeps a car a long time, then EVs, it, well, the Nissan Leaf would make more sense than the Corolla hatchback. Yeah, but then yeah. the Corolla hatchback is also comparable to. I mean, a lot of Toyota shoppers will not buy a Chevy, but um, but you could look at a Chevy Bolt. So okay, scroll down a little bit more because I can't see some of the Bolt stuff. Okay, so wow, yeah, 26595 minus the 7500 hour tax credit down to 19095. That's, yeah, that's cheap. Yeah, right? Yeah. Oh. And that, I think that just. In the future, you'll be able to get bolt, uh, bolts, used bolts for dirt cheap. Yeah. What's the range on a Chevy Bolt right now? Uh, it's like two, 242 or something like that, 250. Is it wow. 240 something? Yeah. Yeah, so the Bolt, I would agree with you there. The Bolt is a slick deal, 100% yeah. at $19,000. I mean, that's you cannot beat the bang for buck there because that beats the Corolla. Like, What does that beat the Corolla by right off the bat? It beats the Toyota Corolla right off the bat, yeah. It beats by it like, right off. Yeah. yeah, by like three. If, if you can get it for 19095 Right, right, right. So Probably I mean, but like 5000 markup. But but even if you could, you could pay three to four thousand dollar market, and you'd still be right at where the the Corolla is, and you wouldn't have to pay gas. Right. Yeah, and and plus, keep in mind, all of these electric cars, they do come with that like one, like two to three years of charging on that Electrify America thing. So that could yeah. be a factor for some people. That's that, that's definitely true. Um, the one thing with that, that's what I was asking, because I swear there was something in the bill that talked about how it was going to support those like charging networks like electrify america oh, yeah, and Tesla. yeah yeah okay it's giving money to the states to build out charging networks um minimum of 50 miles apart uh that, that's the only thing i remember right now i have to be looking at it in order to, that bill is really hard to read i mean what bill is it but it's right. really hard to read. yeah because that's the thing like tesla has the, the half of the half of buying an EV is of course the charging network, and a lot of people don't realize that. And Tesla has got it really down with the supercharging network. Like I have friends that I've, I remember I've told you I have two friends or two coworkers actually that both have pole stars and they both complain about Electrify America networks. They're buggy. They always crash. They don't start. And when they roll up, there's Rivians there. Uh, other pole stars, other makes yeah. like the Audis. They're all there, and everybody's just waiting. Uh, yeah. which really sucks. Yeah. But, you uh, know, we got to build it out. Somebody's got to build it, so. Right. Did you see that uh, Tesla's going to open up their supercharging network? They, like, accidentally released the app? Oh, yeah. An... Yeah, they're, they're, that's going to be a cash cow for them. Yeah, and supposedly it was, like, cheaper than Electrify America's subscription as well. Oh, is it really? Yeah, it's like a dollar a they're month. They're gonna force Volkswagen to dr lower the price. Mm. Well, that's so that's good. Good for the market, right? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. there's no really other any other competition, right? You have Tesla and you have Electrify America, and then Spotty elsewhere. You have like EVGO and like other random like Blink, but those are so far and few between that you can't really say that I'm gonna buy a Blink membership or something like that because you. The people who will buy that are the people who are either thinking that they're going to go far or who actually do go far. And the people who think that they're going to go far are going to look at it and be like, oh, I can't use that. There's not enough charging stations. And the people who actually go far, they're going to try to find a blink station and be like, where are they? 
Yeah, then they're going to get stuck, and it's just going to be a bad, bad day, and then they'll just write off EVs forever um, once they're dead with their bad dead battery and everything. Have you done, like, a, a Model 3 versus a Polestar calculation? I know you have because I know you're bullish on Polestar. Mm, yeah, I, I think they come out basically neck and neck uh, prior to this. Actually, neither of them can get the tax credit. Or actually, no, the Polestar doesn't get the tax credit anymore. So right. that would put the Tesla ahead, right? But before the tax credit change, the Polestar was neck and neck. Um, because the cars are so similar. Like right. Polestar will say that they didn't they weren't gunning for the Model 3 by building the Polestar 2. But they were gunning for the Model 3 by building the Polestar 2. Right, right. Yeah, and the they one big thing with the uh, sorry, the one big thing with the Polestar is that it gets the free charging, uh, which Tesla does not have um, right. at all. All right, so let's see if I can share my screen. I want to go over some stuff. Sure, I'm going to stop sharing. Let's see. Let's see. How do I do this? Do I do that? Okay, now I'm here. Uh, and now, now you're there. Uh, let's see. This is so fun. No. Teslas will get free supercharging once they open it up to all EVs. I really, really doubt it. Because uh, at my at my work there's a uh, Volta charger and those are free. Because they have that like big screen where it has the uh, the ads playing on it. And the Tesla drivers are always there, just parked all day long, all night long. I've, I've even seen a guy come, park his Tesla there, plug it in, and he, like, slept in the car. I was like, that's, I don't think that's worth it. <laughs> yeah, that can't be worth it. I mean, well, I guess if he's doing, like, overnight or something, but it's, yeah, because the charge is so slow, like, 25 miles an hour or something like that. Yeah. But if you're at, just drive it home and plug it in. I, I work for um, Giant. I'm in Maryland. I can't seem to figure this out. I can only share screen, but I can't have us on top of the screen. But when you shared your screen, I could see everybody, so it doesn't even make any sense. And if you have something, something that we play with. Yeah, let's see. Hold on a second. They have to give some sort of incentive to Tesla owners if they open up the chargers. Oh, I don't think so. Yep, pharmacist. Come get your shots. <laughs> you need a tetanus shot, get a flu shot. <laughs> um, I, I really don't think that they have to give an incentive to the Tesla owners if they open up the chargers. The, the people who are going to buy a Tesla, they know they have to pay for it at this point. There's no incentive. There's no real life. And if they open up the chargers, like, what, what are the Tesla owners going to do? Like, just get really upset and sell their cars? Like, they've already bought the car. What are they going to do? And if they like the speed for the price and everything that it offers like I just, I just don't see what the downside for Tesla would be if they did not give some sign of, some sort of incentive to the Tesla owners maybe they could get a slight discount or something oh nice here all right i see something if you work hospital or fda or um Retail, God forbid. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh man, I can't figure this out. No. Maybe maybe it's a maybe it's a discount if they give some sort of incentive, but I just don't see it being free. I, I, I could not see that. Um, the the chargers free. They've said in the past, which is why they took away the free charging for people who bought. Um. 
the early t the Teslas and stuff like that, or the I think it was referrals at one point. People who referred enough people got free charging or something, and um, yeah, uh, yeah. So, so it was it, before it was like you could get like um, I think they get you get you could get like a roadster actually if you uh, referred like I don't know hundreds of people, and then they switched to people. yeah, then they switched it to like. Um, the power walls, rims, you know, random stuff like that. Uh, but then most recently after that, uh, they killed it. And, and now it's just, it was supercharger miles. So I actually got a good amount. I have like 35,000 supercharger miles that are just sitting on my account. Uh, but now they just completely nixed it. There's nothing, there's nothing at all. Uh, Not which bad. sucks. Yeah. <laughs> but I guess you can't use them. That sucks. Yeah. Um, Cause actually I, I haven't. Industries. I'm hurt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i can't use it because uh, i haven't announced it on my channel or anywhere yet but i've actually been banned from uh teslas uh, uh there was like a la times article which some of you might have seen where i was uh we talked about how i was flipping teslas and then cbs also did an interview with me about kind of flipping teslas as well and uh tesla just went into my account found my name and deleted my model y and my model x orders so i am i'm no longer that that dennis wang can't buy any more teslas oh wow yeah and uh my friends which will not be named uh he he was able to find out and because i always thought that like because there's i've heard of people getting banned before or deleted and i just thought it was like a department within tesla that would um try and find people like me and just delete them because th there's tons of people that buy and then sell immediately um but it was just a salesperson at at a at a store <laughs> so um i did yeah. not know that that was a thing yeah it's uh actually insane pretty funny though uh but it's funny it's good i mean i uh i ordered a canoe which i know you've heard about uh the yes. van put a deposit on that but hopefully it uh if it actually delivers and then that shortly was after i was gonna ask you you think that's gonna deliver I don't know. Like supposedly, like my friend in California has seen them testing them, and, like wrapped up and everything. So hopefully, it actually does. Um, okay. But I don't know. What do you What do you think? I mean, they were in some financial doo doo a while ago. I don't know if somebody came in and rescued them. Actually, was it Walmart that rescued them? I think it was Walmart. It was like we'll buy delivery vans. Um, so I think I think Walmart was the one that rescued them. If I'm remembering that correctly. Gotcha. Um, so that's probably why they're still testing, because without that injection, uh, somebody gave them money. Um, right. Without that, somebody giving them money, they would not be testing right now. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, but yeah, who knows if they'll actually deliver? But uh, they, I guess they have some runway uh, to keep testing and stuff. And then uh, shortly after that, I put a deposit down on a Rivian. Uh, so. Okay. Uh, that's Which been one? interesting. Uh, so Rivian, you can't actually um, pick your model anymore. It's just you put a money down for a Rivian, you commit to them, and then they say they'll reach out to you later to build and do all that stuff. But I'm, I'm going to go for the cheapest one. Uh, okay. Well, I mean, that part, trip looks nice. Yeah, I mean, prices might change, but who knows. But yeah, go ahead. Like, uh, Sandy Monroe did a whole bunch of uh, videos about the Rivian, and like it just looks... It, it looks really good yeah definitely uh but so interesting is uh i don't know if you heard rivian the day after the tax credit was actually finalizing or before it finalized they sent out an email to everybody saying click this button to commit to a binding contract right now so that you hopefully qualify for the tax credit and a hundred of hundred dollars of your thousand dollar deposit is non-refundable and so of course i clicked it Okay, yeah, so, because otherwise you could be priced out because of the, the 80000 thing. Right, yeah. For me, I just want the tax credit at the end of the day, so. Uh, but who knows? Who knows? Uh, yeah, so I put a Rivian deposit. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like, if, if the Model 3 stays at its current price of 47990 or whatever uh -huh. it is, and... It starts to deliver. Well, now you can actually, if you place an order for a Model 3 right now, 
it actually is like delivery within like I think here I'm pulling it up model 3 uh, 46990 yeah October of this year October to December so they're just trying to like push this vehicle as quickly as possible um, but if you can take delivery of a model 3 uh, after January 1st that brings the price down to like 39 which I think is a slick deal hard to disagree with that yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah hard to disagree and but, I, I see Yao saying Yao FOMO says he's he's in Moco. I know, I've, um, I I know you're at uh, what is it? A uh, Kushi Sushi, right? Yeah. Yep. Shout out to Kushi Sushi and Pike and Rose. So if you're in the area, go hit him up and just say you know Yao FOMO, and then I think you get like a fifty percent discount. I'm not sure, but something like that. I don't know. <laughs> Happy Hippo, if you're in the area too. Uh, but yeah, so the other thing that's really interesting with these cars, these EV cars, is once it becomes a discount, a $7,500 discount at time of sale, yeah. uh, that's going to affect the sale prices. Because right now, if you go to like the whole used car market, uh, like if you go to cars.com and search the cheapest Model 3, it's like 46 k like a used one, like a 2018. But once everybody's getting that $7,500 discount at 39 then that's just going to put pressure to drop. So there's going to be 20K Model 3 soon. That's, that's my guess. Okay. Which uh, then those would be slick deals, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah FOMO. If, this, is the, this is the same shirt that I'm wearing in the uh, other channel, the, the channel thumbnail of, uh, what, that I do with Ming. So if... That's how I know. Yeah. All right, so happy hippo. Happy hippo. Ah, uh, that is why you do not have a Tesla now. Yep, exactly. Well, I, I, I think I foresaw, like, some of this car market happening, so I just want to exit out. Uh, I have a Model 3 long range on order. ETA moved a third time to November 17th through 29th. You're in New York. Yeah, so you're right at the cusp. That's tough. What, what's your price uh, base price at? What's your price at? Because if it's over 55 k then yeah, just take delivery. But if it's under, then that's when you'll want to wait to that January 1st to try and take advantage of the 7,500. But just know there's going to be hundreds of thousands of people trying to push as well. Okay, so uh, I'm sharing my screen now. Uh, there was one thing that looked really interesting. So I have access to the auction data. Um, and most of the vehicles are holding strong. I like to look at Model Y first um, to see kind of if there's pressure. But Model Y is starting to drop down just a little bit on the, the use, use the auction side, which would mean that there's less demand on the uh, dealer side to sell these used ones, which would also mean that there's less demand on the new car side for taking delivery because it all starts at the top, right? If you can't get a new Model Y, then those buyers try and buy a used one and they go to these private sale lots. Uh, but if they can get a new Model Y or if they don't want to, then it starts to like trickle down for the used car prices. So the, a 2022 Tesla Model Y is starting to trend down just a little bit which might just be because like it's the end of the year model 2022 it's almost 2023 now um, but uh, this might be an indication of demand for the tesla model y might be trending downwards uh, maybe because interest rates maybe because it's getting stale now um, but that's one thing i kind of want to uh, look at but what are your thoughts on that sam I, that's. I, I don't really have any thoughts on that. I, uh, I'm, I was reading the chat. I was, yeah. Uh, no worries. Yes. Yeah, I mean. Yeah. I mean, I kind of agree with what you say. It's just. We'll see what happens with the the tax credit. That's it's really up in the air. It's, really new right now we don't really know how the federal government is going to apply that to everything 
the Alpha almost has Mach E with a bunch of exclamation points. Still yeah, right. Yalfomo Yalfomo actually has two Machis. So what? he's a he's a big Maki fan right now. And it's funny because we got Happy Hippo that's about to take delivery of a model Y. And if I'm reading that correctly, sixty two nine nine zero, that's really tough because that's if uh, the government classifies the Model Y as an SUV, then you would get the seventy five hundred dollar tax credit if you wait till after January first. Just hope and pray that <laughs> That's what they'll do. Yeah, yeah. Do you? I wonder when. Do, when are they going to announce that or decide? Or maybe we have no idea. Federal government. <laughs> yeah, because like sales. Just because also trying to do the discount at a point of sale. That's a lot of like logistics. Because then you basically have to tell dealers or Tesla. Well, I guess it's pretty easy for Tesla because they just minus yeah. it off. They'd have to figure out how the dealers are going to get that money on the back end. Is they're not going to just lose out on that for the sake of this. Um, and then plus they have to decide if they want to classify that as an SUV. Um, that's that's tough because it just depends on how you look at it. Um, there's so many cars that look like that that could either be a car or some sort of crossover or something like that. You really don't know what they're going to do with it. So uh, Tesla better you know, get their lobbyists. <laughs> right. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure uh, there's like a site. It's like fueleconomy.gov, I think, right? You've yeah. probably seen that site. I was, I, I, I was looking at it. I couldn't really figure out what they classified it as right now. I thought it was on here until I couldn't. I swear they classified well, actually, it. No, it is classified as an SUV. Yeah, it's so a it, small sport utility vehicle, two wheel drive, on the real rear wheel drive Tesla Model Y. So you do qualify, right? So that gets it. But what doesn't get it is the Mach E, because I'm pretty sure the Mach E is classified as a station wagon. Really? Yeah. That's funny. Yep. So they're small. Giving it to Tesla, not giving it to Ford. Yeah. See. Oh wait. Hold on. Let me. Small. Station wagon right here in small print. Ford. So that's another thing, Yalfom. If you buy another one, which I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know if you will, but the Maki is classified as a small station wagon, which means that it's you cannot buy a Maki over fifty-five k. Which I think a lot of the Makis are under fifty-five k. Um, I think it starts at like forty-three. 43895 but of course before markup right wait hold on hold on back up a second okay which, which version of that mustang mach e are you looking at uh, i just did a quick google mach e all wheel drive extended is i have i'm on the e, the fuel economy.gov website yeah and then epa size class is a small sport utility vehicle four wheel drive on the 2022 ford mustang mach e gt Oh, so maybe they reclassified it. Yeah. Because the 2021... Look, look, there's, a, there's a thing, right? So if you look at this bill, right, it's taking away the tax credit from, like, I don't know, like 50 or 60 vehicles, right? Because they're all made overseas. So right. in lieu of that, they do want, they do want adoption of electric vehicles. Um, but they do want them to be built here. That's the other thing. But at first, they still need people to buy the car. So they do need to make sure that some cars do still qualify. So they probably change classifications in order to make sure that there are still cars that you can buy that qualify. Right. That's what I think happened here. Yeah, because it was really weird that they classified it as a station wagon. Uh, because it really is like a small SUV at the end of the day. Yeah. Depends on who you ask, right? <laughs> exactly. Uh, okay, so Biden signed the bill. Where the money actually goes up is up in the air. My guess Ukraine gets it. Uh, the GT is up. Uh, so if it's classified as a SUV, then really you can get uh, the fully loaded one, uh, which is like, let's see, 61995 and still be okay to be under that 80K threshold. So Maki might be the deal too if you can get it for MSRP which is the real question without markup. 
But uh, yeah. Yafoma, what's what's like the current markups on Maquis? Do you know? Because I have not been tracking Maquis markups at all. But I imagine it's like. Because have you been tracking the Hyundai Ionic in the Kia EV6, Sam? I I really like the um, Ionic Five. I haven't been tracking the price. Is I went and I um, I sat in one a, a few times, and I think um, one of my friends has one, and I've, I've um, driven it. And the seating position on that is really nice. The um, the seats are very nice. Like the, the car overall, I wasn't sold on the look actually of the car. It was like, I was like, huh. But after I've sat in it, I was like, whoa, okay. Um, give Tesla a run for the money. Because I've sat in a Model Y and a Tesla, like the showroom things before. And I th actually think the Ionic 5, for me personally, uh, the seats are more comfortable. Yeah. How was the, um, when you drove it, did the suspension or the comfortability of the ride, did you notice anything with that? Or was it kind of just standard? I didn't notice anything special. Um, okay. Yeah. But it wasn't when you like. Go ahead. When you when you drove a Model Three or a Model Y, did you notice anything about the suspension? Oh, uh, I I did not drive it. I just sat in it in the um, in the showroom. I was just like, I'm not actually gonna buy this anytime soon. So I was like, uh, I don't want to waste my time, waste their time. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, that's the one thing with I would say with a fact with for Model Three and Model Ys, their suspension is complete crap uh, in terms oh. of comfortability. Uh, but I've heard through some of like the, well, I've seen through like the YouTube influencers that are make videos about the Ionic that have owned Teslas. They, they say it's, it's a little bit more comfortable, uh, which makes sense because it's an actual car company, uh, shots fired, uh, than Tesla. Actual car company. Come on. Tesla is an actual <laughs> car company. They're going to make like 1.6. Okay. That's a little too high. 1.5 million vehicles this year. Right. See if I'm wrong. Right, um, right. Um, but yeah, Ionic. I've been. A, I was a firm believer of the Ionic because it's that was, in my opinion, was the best bang for buck. Uh, because you would pay for it, you get the seventy five hundred dollars tax credit afterwards. You got three hundred miles, and you got like three years of free charging. It was like a no brainer in my opinion. But it's just really hard to get without markup. Um, so there's I, a I, there's a video on my channel where um, me and my brother, who's also Dennis. Um, we we just assigned arbitrary points to these vehicles, and the Ionic Five came out on top. I was expecting the Tesla Model Y, but using our arbitrary point system, the Ionic was number one, and we were like, "What?" <laughs> yeah, the Ionic is a slamming deal, and I actually tried to go to a dealer last week right before the the bill was signed to try and get my friend one, and that dealer wanted seven thousand dollars markup on a base like 49k uh ionic and of course we just that that's just way too much seven thousand dollar markup on a 50k car is just too much in my opinion so we just walked away and of course they sold it the next day uh because there's just people out there that just have to have a electric car yeah yeah uh, yeah, Fomo, yeah, you should have pulled the trigger on the Ionic 5. Uh, but the other thing is, I don't know if you know, the Kia version, the EV6, does not get the free charging for three years. It's only like a thousand miles. So it's not as what? good a, as not as good as a deal. Even though it looks, I would say it looks, well, they both look cool in my opinion. But yeah, it does not get the, uh, the charging, which doesn't make any sense. If you sat in one, is it comparable to the Ionic in terms of like, uh, how it The Ionic. The Ionic is cooler in terms of like the interior. Uh, yeah, the Hyundai is, but the Kia is kind of a little bit more basic. Um, I don't think I sat in the Kia actually. The Ionic I definitely sat in. It was yeah, definitely more cooler. But the Kia just looks kind of more dynamic as a car, um, in my opinion. On yeah. the outside. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, these are yeah the Ionic is. Um, for sure. Tyson Industries, keep buying Tesla. Biden's done nothing for electric vehicles in nearly three years. EV stocks were exploding under President Trump's four years. Uh, <laughs> I mean... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's just because the credit was there and uh, 
now the credit is gone. I mean, we, it's exploding right now. There's, it's, it's just, it's just we have a bit of a, um, the sales are exploding. It, it's, we're having a bit of a moment to buy. How's that? We're having a bit of a moment to buy because this decline is reasonless. <laughs> But yeah, it's a, it's gonna be interesting because uh, gas is starting to come down nationwide, so I think that's really gonna put compression on kind of our math on the what we were talking about earlier on the some of those cars, the hybrids versus the electric cars, and some people they're just gonna see the car payment or the price of the car and they're just gonna freak out like that's way too much, uh, right. and they're not gonna think like oh I have to loop in gas as well, um, so I think there's gonna yeah. be. Uh, a downtrend on EV cars, especially now that it's so confusing for most people on like what car gets it, what car doesn't. Um, but once, yeah. I think it's going to be a good year for Tesla, that's for sure, once the credit comes back on January 1st. I, I think um, all the other manufacturers are going to find ways to get that credit. I, I really do. I think they're going to find a way to get the credit. And um, it's going to be, it'll be good for the economy in the long run right and that's what yeah. this bill is after so we're really disappointed as buyers in the short run but i think as um, in terms of economic engineering uh this was a you just had to do it because uh, other countries are subsidizing the heck out of it and we're we're kind of feeding our credit into their their economies by not by, by kind of like not protecting ourselves essentially right because like if you buy a let's say the Polestar gets the $7,500 tax credit where does that money go it's like the battery is built in China the components are built in China the car is built in China so it just goes over there and then they are able to get better technologies and eventually surpass uh, manufacturing here and then all of a sudden, it doesn't make any sense to build cars here, and we don't want them. Right. Have you heard anything where, because you said earlier that um, some of these caps might get removed this year once, like, the EPA removes that, but there's really no timeline, right? I guess it's just whenever the they cap is gone, as far as I know, in terms of cap on vehicles sold. Hmm. Okay. Um, I understand. The, the cap is gone. Um, they just have to figure out the, the deployment of the credit it's just you know you, you sign a bill and I mean the whole machinery needs to get into action to implement it's not like it's not like they knew what was going to be in this all along right they had an idea but it wasn't like oh we know so by the time it gets signed then we're we're a go ahead because like originally it was like the tax credit was going to be twelve thousand dollars yeah or twelve thousand five hundred which is insane yeah, I remember that. So you're saying that it's possible to get a really cheap Model 3 this year? It could be. We'll see what happens. It, we're, we're really waiting on what what they say. But then, you know, if you order now, do you really get delivery this year? Yeah, it says, uh, I mean, according to their site, which they're pretty accurate, and they're more accurate if you live in the California states because they, uh, they basically, at the end of each quarter, they just dump all the vehicles and deliver it to West Coast people. Um, but it says right now, if you order a Model 3 rear-wheel drive 46990, you get it this year, October through December. So yeah. this might be a interesting But don't buy too many of them and sell them because you get banned. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But I'm down for a 30, 30K Model 3. I mean, that would be the ultimate. Like, you can't touch that with any of the cars because of the autopilot and the technology. And the range at 267, that's good enough, in my opinion. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it beats... You're beating out the Maki. Sorry, Yao. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. All right. Well, that's... Uh, I think that's pretty much wrapped it up. Uh, if anybody has some lingering questions on the EV market uh, or buying or selling a Tesla, you can quickly try and wrap your fire. Uh, definitely check out Sam's channel. Uh, Sam, if you want to do a quick bit on what you do on your channel and some videos that are coming up, go for it. Oh, uh, on my channel, we talk about uh, EV stocks. We've done that a lot. And then we, I talk also about uh, electric vehicles sometimes. 
and then I'll hopefully be talking about how uh, energy efficiency for your home is important and how you could do some of that. Um, that that's in the works. I can't exactly tell you when that's coming out, but hopefully soon. And of course, right at the end of the stream, I figured out how to publish comments. So now you can see on the screen, Yafomo, you think they'll change the max income you can make to qualify for the tax credit? I'd say no, but Sam, what do you think? I agree. I say no. Uh, Corgi-san put the link to your channel, so thank you to Corgi. Thank you, yes. What else we got here? Uh... Happy Hippo, thank you guys, I'm from New York. Congrats on your Model Y, that's hopefully incoming. Um, uh, the Tesla methodology is basically the first two months of every quarter, they try and deliver all the way to the East Coast. Uh, and then basically the third month, they just, they give up. So uh, hopefully you get it soon. Wow, pharmacists are not doctors again. Damn. Dang. Shots fired. Yeah, Tyson likes to come in here and throw some fire. But uh, we like Tyson, I think. I don't know. Yep, so that's a cool feature. What's going to happen if your drug has interactions? And <laughs> All right, anyways. All right, well, thanks, for everybody, for watching. Thank you, Sam, for joining us on this experience and uh, going through all this stuff. We could probably try and do this again. It would be fun. Um, but, yeah. Maybe like a monthly thing we can talk about the market and when these tax credits are coming up. Uh, but yeah, if you have right. any final, final words, go for it. No final words. Jeez, oh, he's just going My out. Goodness, wow. <laughs> I'm so done. We're out. All right. Have a good night, everyone. All right.